This conference will now be recorded. Okay, everybody could say hello to one another. Hello. Okay. Hello. That's in person. That's. So I wanted to just. Sorry? Oh, Gabriella's here. Yeah, she, I think she went through the. Okay. So I'm just going to start. Um, I had a conversation with my wife after our class last week. And um, I mentioned, Leah, what you had brought up about about the person, right? Leah had, had asked, is, you know, will, you know, Leah had heard a story of a person who, who, who died and was at a certain level in the world to come, but needed to come back to this world in order because they had nursed, I think, from a non-Jewish mother, I think you had, yeah. Right, so Leia was had asked or was assuming, does that mean that everyone who converts will need to come back? And I said, I don't believe there is any such um, understanding or teaching. Right, coming back, this reincarnation is something that happens at times. If there's unfinished business, if there's the need to ascend higher, and sometimes. That can happen to people who are born Jewish, and that could also happen to people who are who convert, right? There's no, uh, no, and no one has a monopoly on that. So then, Leah, I, I mentioned the story of a person who was non-Jewish, and and I said basically, you know, that that that, you know, everyone needs to reach what's called their tikkun, and their tikkun is their fixing up of themselves, their correction of themselves. And sometimes that will require a, a return performance, we'll call it. <laughs> and Leia mentioned the story of a person, a woman, I believe, who was having these uh, non-Jewish, non-Jewish family, was having these constant dreams of, of, a, um, of being in the Holocaust, right? And... And um, and she kept waking up, and she said, "I'm not Jewish. I'm not Jewish. I'm not Jewish." And in the end, right, she converted to Judaism. Right. So I had said along the lines that you know maybe that was a person who was denying her Judaism, right? And this was, you know, and this was her way of correcting that. By choo- by choosing to be Jewish, right? When I when I discuss this with Natalie, my wife, so she had a very uh, uh, <coughs> excuse me a very insightful thought, you know, and said and said, look, I, uh, all of you guys are are you know make are taking this step, are making this step, you know, and just like perhaps that was you know that was that person's tikkun, right? Who knows what odyssey you guys have have been on, right? And and perhaps this is you know your this is you know this conversion might be your 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 ultimate tikkun. So as opposed to uh, Leia, that you know a person who converts will need to come back, right? Maybe this is. <laughs> You know, the, the, the Kabbalists say that our generation is almost all people who have been here before, mm-hmm. right? So so not looking at it that, oh, if you do this, you're going to have to come back again. Maybe this is the ultimate tikkun, right? You know, for each and every one of you, that you are on your own taking these steps and deciding to, to become part of, of you know you ask the UN one of the most popular nations in the world right mm-hmm. right so uh, you know that's actually one of the things that that we're supposed to that we're supposed to say to the potential converts right like do you know how the Jews have been persecuted and how Jews even to this day right you know there's this um, you know the the increase in in, in hate crimes, whenever you see there's an increase in, in hate crimes, look a little further at, at the statistics and how much of that is directed towards Jews, right? You know, and, um, you know, and, you know, for you guys, in addition to being African-American, right? Hey, let's also be Jewish, you know. Let, 
<laughs> you know, yeah. if we're going to be singled out, let's uh, let's go for broke in. over here. <laughs> no half measures. We're <laughs> we're all in. You know, yeah. so uh, yeah. So I, I like Natalie's Natalie's take on it about about not not that this will make you require another another tikkun, but who knows? This might be the the ultimate tikkun. You know that each of you are 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 taking upon yourselves in this journey of yours. Okay, so a little introduction to brachot. Right, the next. Um, section we'll be working on and we're not going to like i said we're not going to go through this entire book but but it would be good for you guys to have this book we'll go through parts of it and like this also you'll have this as a great reference as we go on this is the laws of brachos pitre halacha uh um published by art scroll halacha series what is a bracha uh, bless a blessing so how do we understand right right me blessing god right <laughs> god let me bless you right i it really seems strange almost bizarre and and there are a number of instances right um where clearly the simple understanding of blessing doesn't seem to work okay there is a well there's a pasuk that says that god will bless your bread and bless your water now, what does it mean god's going to bless the bread et he's going to bless the bread right? right what does that mean you know, uh, very often people have a misconception about kashrut. What makes something kosher, some people think? <coughs> the rabbis blessed it. <laughs> the rabbis blessed it. Right? And of course, that's not what makes something kosher. Right? So if we have a verse that God will bless uvarech et lachmecha, God will bless the bread. Aye, Susie, good. The gate closed on me, so oh. I not to open that. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Like okay. What are you saying? <laughs> What's the score? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we just started with the introduction, of Susie, yeah. of blessings, right? Baruch Atah, blessed are you, Hashem. So it's a little bit strange, right? We're blessing God. What, is, what does that mean to bless God? And we have a verse that God, the, the passage says, Uvarech et lachmecha, God will bless your bread and your water. What does that mean, God's going to bless the bread and the water? And the Gemara tells a story about, hmm, I forget exactly who the sage was, who was a Kohen Gadol. And he went into the Kodesh Kadesh, he went into the Holy of Holies. When would the Kohen, the priest, the Jewish priest, when would he enter the Holy of Holies? On Yom Kippur, only on one day a year, on Yom Kippur. And he said, and He saw a vision of God. Yoshev sitting, Al Kisei Ram Venisa, sitting on a throne that was uplifted throne. And God said to him, And he said to me, Yishmael, my son, Barcheni, bless me. God said to Yishmael, bless me. And Yishmael said, may be the will before you. Your compassion should overwhelm any anger. And you should treat your children within the line of judgment, meaning to be forgiving, to be full of compassion. And God nodded his head. This is, if you guys want to look it up, the whole Gemara, a very interesting Gemara. It's in Gemara Brachot. Go to, are you guys familiar with Safaria? Mm -hmm. Safaria.org. S-E-F-A-R-I-A.org. Go to texts, go to Talmud, go to Brachot, 
And I think it's an either 3A, 4A, 5A, 6A. So I'll, I'll find exactly, I'll let you know exactly which, which daf it's on. So he didn't say, God, you are great. God, you are awesome. God, you are powerful. God, you are, God, you are. He was asking God to act with mercy to his children. So clearly, Baruch has a meaning beyond blessing as we think about it, right? A blessing meaning, oh, you're this, you're that. So the Nefesh HaChayim explains that Baruch comes from the word Brecha, which is like a pool. Barech means to increase. Okay? Increase. So God will bless your bread, will bless your water, which means that what? You'll have an increase in your bread, an increase in your sustenance. So what are we saying then? Baruch Ata Hashem. Elokeinu Melech HaOlam. Let's just take Bore Pri Water. Shahakol Nia Bidvaro. Right, the simplest of blessings. Blessed are you, Hashem, Elokeinu, our God, Melech, sovereign king of the universe, of the Olam. Shehakol niya bivaro, that everything was created by your words, and with that, then we could partake of the food you were about to drink or eat. If it's not something that grows on a tree, grows from the ground, or is a cake, we'll come, we'll come to all the different brachot that we have. So what is the increase? What increase are we asking for? So we have to go a little bit deeper again. Elokeinu, our God, Melech HaOlam. What does Olam mean? The world, the universe. Good. But in Hebrew, Ayin Lamid Mem. Okay, in Hebrew, every word has its shoresh, has its root word. The root, usually a three-letter root. The shoresh, the root of olam is ayin, lamid, mem, which means hidden. So what is the connection between world and hidden? Why would the Hebrew Jewish word for world have at its root the word alam? Hidden. Exactly. The Jewish understanding of the world, how do you define the world? The place where God hides. Meaning, God's presence is not overwhelming, it's not overly obvious. It is subtle. It is hidden. It's not so hidden that we can't find it, but it's not so non-hidden that it's overwhelming, which is what gives us our ability to have free choice, which we understand as being the very purpose of this world of creation. Once again, 545 Mondays, we're learning Derech Hashem, where we discuss all of this in depth. The very purpose of creation is to create a being, a creature, mankind, which has the ability to make free will decisions and can decide to connect themselves to the spiritual, to the godly, to become somewhat godly, and thereby ultimately have that connection, that dveikus, with God. So the very definition, because the very purpose of the world is a place where God, like we said, hides himself enough that we make a decision to connect to God and we find God. Meaning, we look outside and we see this tree growing out of the earth and out of these wooden branches come these delicious oranges. Now, in the desert, when we left Egypt, for 40 years, the man fell from the heavens. The food fell from the heavens. If we would see that, what would we say? Wow, that's a miracle. 
That's incredible. But we see food growing out of the earth, out of the dirt. And this one is a luscious orange, and this one is an apple, and these are grapes. And then you have these 40-pound watermelons laying there on the ground from a little vine. And then you dig under the ground, and you have your, your potatoes and your sweet potatoes and your onions. That's normal? That's natural. That's Mother Nature. But if food will come from the heavens, miracle. Growing out of the dirt, natural. Right? And that is this midpoint of the world where a person could look at it and say, wow, what a miracle, what a gift. Or a person can say, ah, oh, Mother Nature does an amazing job, right? That's that tipping point where we're at, where God hides himself enough that we have to, yes, acknowledge that that's God, or we can just as easily ignore God, cut him out of the whole equation. So the bracha says God is the melech ha'olam. He is the sovereign king in a hidden way. So let's go back to our question before. If baruch means to increase, what are we asking? What should be increased? Our awareness of him. Our awareness, his presence, our connection to him. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So what we're saying whenever we make a bracha is baruch. Increase. Ata Hashem, you are God. Elokeinu, our God. Melech ha'olam, the king of this world wherein you are hidden. Right? Increase your presence here. Speak to me. <laughs> right? Right? Increase your presence. Make it more apparent to me. Make it more apparent to everyone. That is what we are asking Hashem in a bracha. And then we specify what that bracha is. But the idea of a bracha, so that is the, the deeper meaning of the bracha, the overriding understanding purpose of the bracha is to give us our God awareness, not to take things for granted. To be living, existing with God to the point that we're supposed to make a hundred brachot every day. Now, if you are a, a man who's davening three times a day, right? So you have three amidas. That's already, you're already at 57. And you have a whole host of other brachot that come before the Amidah. You have the morning brachot, right? On, if you have some Sidurim around on page 18. Let, let, let's take a look at that, right? Do we have enough Sidurim? There's another one over here. If, if you can, in the, in the library, there's a whole bunch from the cart that was um, needed some, some work. You have another 15 over here. You have your brachot before Psuki de Zimra. There's another two. We've got we've got you know 80 something just on a regular day. And then you and, and then you eat a few things, you bench a few times, use the facilities a few times, right? We get to the hundred. But but the idea of the hundred brachot a day is page 18, is to get ourselves trained not to take things for granted. Let, let's take a look at these morning brachot that we have over here on page 18. Blessed are you, Hashem, our God, 1819 in English, King of the universe, who gave the heart understanding to distinguish between day and night. Okay? So he give God, God, you've given us understanding to start our day. Right? Blessed are you, Hashem, Shaloh Asani Goy for not making me a Gentile. Now, actually, that's a question that always comes up. So a person who converts, right? Yes, they too. Now, 
This is not slamming non-Jews, but a non-Jew has seven mitzvot, and a Jew has 613 mitzvot. So the idea is that we have more than seven mitzvot. Blessed you gods, you've not made me a slave. Now, in a world of slavery, though the truth is we live in a world of slavery, right? Well, I can't even say not so much in America, right? I remember when I was on, I was part of this, this um, Irvine City um, group that the, that the mayor had appointed myself as the Jewish and uh, we had a, a priest, we had an Iman, we had someone from UCI and someone from Hogue and someone from the business community, right, about trying to see, you know, what, what ideas can we give for the next 10 years for Irvine? And we had a whole meeting about, about trafficking. Yeah. Not traffic, but trafficking, yeah. right? How it's a serious problem in Orange County. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? It's a serious problem in Orange County. I too I was shocked. Yeah. It's a serious problem in Orange County because if you have a situation where you've got a combination of conventions, sports going on, and people traveling in and out, and wealth, mm-hmm. so then that is very rife for trafficking. And trafficking really is a form of slavery. We, right? these, these, these poor girls are, are, are literally enslaved. So besides parts of the world where there really is, where the, I shouldn't say where there really is, where there is slavery as we think of slavery in more general terms, Right, but there is slavery going on right now here in Orange County. Right. And it was fascinating when I was on the plane this time, I was in <laughs> Philadelphia with, with, with family for the weekend. And in the restroom there, I saw something that I'd never seen before. There was a sign there on the door if you are here against your will, there is help available call this number, text this number, oh. approach a flight attendant. They are there ready to help you. Mm-hmm. Wow. This was in, in the plane from, for, uh, yeah. Yeah, Southwest. I mean, the planes were going all over the place. I, I never see, I, I, I certainly never noticed that before. So Shiloh Asani Aved on one hand, not make me a slave. Okay. And also, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not a slave to different passions I have, different lusts that I have. I'm not a slave. I'm able to control myself. I don't always control myself, but I can control myself. And I'm thanking God for not making me a slave. Here, men and women have different brachot. Men say for not having made me a woman. Why? Because similarly, a woman is obligated in a less mitzvot than a man. So the man is thanking God for the additional mitzvot. The woman has her bracha. Shasani kirtso no, that you have made that God has made me in accordance with His will. Meaning, a man needs all of these, all of these extra mitzvot, all of these reminder mitzvot. If the purpose of a mitzvah is to give us this God awareness, so a man needs all of these. Uh, hitting us over the head with, with a two by four to try to get us to uh, to to remember. Whereas a woman is made, kirt so no, is already made inherently in accordance with God's will and therefore needs, le- needs less. So the man is thanking, thank God that I have extra mitzvot. And the woman's saying, yeah, it's because you're a moron and you need that, <laughs> right? And, with that, and the women are thanking God for making us yeah. Right? In accordance with his will, right? you know, the, 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 they, they give him mashal. A mashal is a parable, right? You know, that, you, know you, you go to someone's house, right? And uh, you go use the restroom, and then you get a little curious. Shouldn't do this. You open the medicine cabinet, right? <laughs> oh, I'm curious to see what they got in there. Right? You open the medicine cabinet, right? And I say, oh, gosh, what a boring cabinet. You know, some Tylenol, some dental floss. 
I don't know, you know, some cold medicine, right? All right. And then, right? Right? And then, and then this guy, right, goes to the other person's house. Right? He goes, he opens the medicine cabinet <laughs> and he sees for, you know, for all these skin things going on, you know, blood pressure, right? So he's jealous. Oh, my medicine cabinet, it's, 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 it's terrible. All it has is some, some, you know, some dental floss in there. Now that's a medicine cabinet. Right? Obviously, you're not going to be jealous, right? That's the woman's bracha. Shasani cared so no, right? That, that she has that awareness. Let's go further, though. Who gives sight to the blind? We wake up and we can see. Mm-hmm. Have you ever tried walking around your house with your eyes closed for just a few minutes? Try going just upstairs. Mm-hmm. I mean, I have to right, going upstairs and making your way to your room with your eyes shut, closed tight. How many times, you guys are new in your house, but how many times have you done that in your house? No, how many times have you gone up the steps and gone to, like, you kind of know the way, sure. right? Try doing it with your eyes closed. Mm. Right? There are millions of people in the world who are blind. Yeah. Every morning you open your eyes mm-hmm. and you can see. We have to appreciate that. The brachot tell us, don't take things for granted. Mm -hmm. You have so many blessings in your life. The next one, who releases the bound. You wake up in the morning, you you can sit up. There are people who can't sit up. There are paraplegics in the world. Who straightens the bent, you can then stand up. 20, 21, who spreads out the earth upon the waters. Sha'asali called Sarki, who's given done for me all my needs, who firms man's footsteps. I can walk. When I was a teenager, I ended up on crutches a number of times from basketball injuries. You don't appreciate that you can walk until you can't walk. But we don't want Hashem to say, all right, the only way Sina is going to appreciate it is by putting him on crutches, right? We want to appreciate it while we have it. That's what these brachot are all meant to do. Who gives us strength, who crowns Israel with splendor, who gives strength to the weary, who removes sleep from my eyes and slumber from my eyelids. These brachot in the morning, every bracha is meant to give us this awareness this appreciation we'll soon see there are three categories of bracha but in general a bracha is don't take things for granted and god is ne'elam god is hidden make sure you find him make sure that you find him and you acknowledge him and you appreciate him don't take things for granted when I was teaching in, in yeshiva in Israel, uh, much earlier in my career. So there was a boy, and vacation was coming up. And this guy was a good-looking guy, an athlete, right? But didn't come from, didn't have much money. He came from a, a more modest family than some of the other boys. And vacation was coming up, and some of the wealthier boys had, were planning a big trip. And he couldn't afford to go on one of these big trips with other guys on vacation. So he was kind of down. The guy's name is David. So I say, David, what's up? He goes, nah, I don't want to learn. I don't want to do anything. Why? He said, ah, I, I, I can't go anywhere. I can't do anything. Right? How can I pray to God? How can I, you know, I just, I'm not, I'm not feeling good. I said, David. How much, if I would write you a check for a million dollars now, right, you'd be happy? Oh, yeah. Right? You, you, you'd be willing to thank God? Sure. Well, he said, well, make it five million, Rabbi. I say, fine, fair enough. Five million. Okay? And I said, let me ask you a question. Would you rather have five million 
or your ability to see. Mm. He said, mm. I want to see. Five million or your ability to talk? I want, I want to be able to talk. Five million or your ability to use your arms? My arms. Five million, your ability to walk. The ability to walk. So God has given you gifts that you have valued over $20 million. Maybe you should feel appreciation for that. These are, these are gifts that we have that we can't put a value on. But the problem is we take things for granted. Brachot, the blessings are there. Make sure that we don't take things for granted. Now there's a danger. That's the danger. That you can make 200 blessings a day and never stop once to stop to think. Thank you, Asha. And that's and that's that's the danger. You know, when you're starting off, it's great. Oh, you're so you know. But then after a few months, years, decades, that's the that's what takes the work. Because it's very easy to settle into a routine. And a person could come to shul and daven for an hour plus and not once really think about God. So the, the brachot are there to give us this structure to be God-focused, but it's not a... It's not a magic pill. We have to really focus ourselves. Sometimes you hear bracha, mm-hmm. Bracham which was Baruch HaTah Hashem Lekeinu Melech HaOlam. Bracham mm-hmm. What are you saying? <laughs> what is that? What language is that? That's, that's the danger. But the brachot are there to give us the focus. As we keep saying, guys, right? All the things that we do, all the halacha that we're learning, it's not voodoo. It's not not crossing things off the list. This is all meant, every bracha, every mitzvah is meant to give us this God awareness. That's what it's all about. Okay. There are three general categories of brachot. Okay. The three, and this book is going to be focusing mostly on one of them. Okay. There is blessings of thanks. Okay? A lot of davening, a lot of our prayers are comprised of these brachot, blessings of what's called shevach. Shevach is praise, is thanks. Okay? These brachot that we just went through, these 15 brachot, are brachot of shevach, brachot of praise, of thanks, of acknowledgement, of appreciation. A good part of davening is made up of that. Actually, if you want to give these out, take a pass around. Okay, there is... In the Sidur, if you look on page, if you look on page, where is it in the Sidur? On page 1415, 
there is the bracha of Asher Yatsar. Okay, the bracha of Asher Yatsar. Asher Yatsar, and remind me, I will send it on to our WhatsApp. An amazing 14, 14, 15. <laughs> there is an article that was written in JAMA, J-A-M-A, the Journal of American Medical Association, about Asher Yatsar, mm-hmm. written by a doctor. Asher Yatsar is a blessing that is made every time we use the facilities, we go to the bathroom, whether it's number one or number two, there is a blessing that we say afterwards. Mm-hmm. And what, what, you're making a blessing on that? Well, go to the hospital and see the people who have these little bags attached to them. The people who don't have the ability (laughs) to eliminate waste. And every time that a person uses the facilities, then one makes the brach of Asher Yatsar. Blessed are you, Hashem, the very bottom of page 15. Asher Yatsar at Adam Bechachma, you fashioned man with wisdom. Uvaravon created within him, Nekavim, Nekavim, Chalulim, Chalulim, different cavities, openings. Galui v'yadu, it's revealed and known before, your kisei kvodecha, the thorn of your glory, shimi patech echad mehem, if one of those that's meant to be closed gets opened up. O yisaseim echad mehem, one of those that's supposed to be open gets clogged up. One cannot stand and survive before you. Blessed are you, Hashem. Rofei kol basar, who heals all flesh and acts wondrously. Right? We made these in merit for full nekarvi for Tinok ben Nechama Adina Sinar. This is my first grandson was born with a lot of medical issues, and he still struggles. And we made this these cards to give out in his merit that people should say this blessing in his merit. Say it thanking God that, you, that your body's working, but it should serve as a merit. He was just in the hospital this past week because he did have, have an obstruction. I had to go back to the hospital. Right? These are things, right? What do we take more for granted than using the bathroom when we need to? But without that, you're dead. And if, and, and if you're not dead, if there'll be a medically a way of, of helping, right? You are incredibly inconvenienced and humiliated. I mean, it's not taking things for granted. So one category is the brachot of shevach, the blessings that we make of thanks. That's one category of blessings. A second category of blessings are birchot ha-mitzvot. The blessings that we make prior to the performance of a mitzvah. If we're going to do a mitzvah, then for many of the mitzvot, there is a blessing that we say beforehand. Not for all mitzvot. Person gives tzedakah, gives charity. You put some money into the pushka, into the little tzedakah box. You don't make a blessing before that. You do a chesed. You're about to hold open the door for someone, right? You get your wife something, right? You bring her something, you bring her whatever, whatever, or you bring your husband, whatever it is. You bring your child something, right? That's a chesed, right? All the time you do chesed, you know, so... Someone's put it so beautifully. I heard about this person, that this person will wake up in the middle of the night. If there's a Jew who needs something, this person will get up in the middle of the night and run and helps and help that person. You say, wow, amazing. Who is it? Hi, mom. <laughs> Hi, dad. <laughs> That's who it is. Mm-hmm. In the middle of the night, they're dead, exhausted, long day. Mommy! Right? There's, there's so much chesed that we do. 
that's, you know, we don't make a bracha for every mitzvah, this, right, without getting into technicality. But you light the Shabbat candles, you make the bracha, sher kiddush anam savitzivanu lahadlik ner shel Shabbat. You put on the talit, right? Lihit atef batzitzit. You light the Hanukkah candles, you make a blessing before you light those candles, right? Once the conversion is completed, you guys start wearing tefillin, you make the blessing before putting on the hand tefillin, before putting on the head tefillin. Comes to the holidays, you're sitting in the sukkah, you make a blessing. You're shaking the lul of an etrog, you're hearing the shofar, right? For all of these, we make our birchot mitzvot. And the bracha of a mitzvah is a very powerful, powerful wording. Baruch atah Hashem elokeinu melech haolam. That's how they all start. Blessed are you, God. Elokeinu, our God. Which means you're not just this God somewhere. You're our God. Yeah. You're involved in me. Hashgacha pratis. Individualized divine providence. Then we say asher melech haolam. Asher. Kiddishanu b'mitzvotav. You sanctify us through your mitzvot. I always say, what is a mitzvah? An act done by a physical person in a physical world, by a physical thing that allows us to touch that which is eternal, that which is spiritual, that which is godly. And we are changed we are changed as a result of that. We don't necessarily feel that change, but we are changed. I've told the story a number of times. There was a great um, <coughs> Sephardic rabbi in Israel, the name of the Baba Sali. He lived in the south of Israel. And if you wanted to go see the Baba Sali, it was known you first went to a mikvah. Everyone familiar with what a mikveh is? Yeah. Right, right, to the immersion pool to purify yourself. You first go to a mikveh and then you go into his office. Three of my buddies went down to see him. Two of them first went into the mikveh. They went to a nearby mikveh. Two and the other guy said, ah. He put his head under the faucets, got his hair good and wet. Right? Right? The three of them walk into the room of Baba Sali, he looks at that third guy and he says, Faker, out of here. <laughs> we get changed by a mitzvah. Mm. A mitzvah changes us. My eyes don't see it. Maybe your eyes do, maybe they don't. The Baba Sali's eyes would see it. So whenever you're making a bracha before the this category number two, the bracha of mitzvot, so there it is, asher kiddishanu b'mitzvotav. You have sanctified us with your mitzvot. Vitzivanu, and you have commanded us le to. Right, we had all the mezuzo checked. I put the mezuzos back up this morning. V'tzivanu likvoa mezuzah, to establish a mezuzah on the doorpost. Whatever it is. That's category number two of the brachot. It is the brachot that we make prior to doing a mitzvah. Okay? We'll double back to that in a few minutes. The third category is brachot of requests, of bakashot. And that is really, where do we have those? Can anybody tell me where we have the blessings of bak, a bracha of bakashot, of requests? Shmona Esrei, Amidah, exactly. Okay? The Amidah, which is the point that we build up to in our prayers, so there, we've, I think we discussed, yeah, we, when we discussed, um, when we, when we discussed um, the different things that are added into the Amidah for different days and holidays, yeah. we have three brachot 
of Shevach, of praise, first three. The last three are brachot of thanks. And the middle section on weekdays is bakashot, our requests. Let's take a look in our Sidurim. Let's go to Shacharit. On page, let's start on page 98. Okay? Page 98, page 99. The first bracha is the bracha of the patriarchs in 99. And then towards the bottom, three lines from the bottom, that might have a different numbering system. Oh, no, it's still on 99. Oh, yeah? Okay, good. All right? Number, bracha number two is God's might. You see that towards the very bottom on 99. We're, ignore all the, not ignore, but we're not dealing with all the notes on the bottom. We're dealing with just the Hebrew and the translation all above the lines over here. Okay? We're turning the page to 100, 101. And actually, that continues all the second blessing. 102 is, 103, holiness of God's name. Okay? Those are the first three blessings that are standard throughout. And now we have the 13 bakashot, the 13 requests. Atachone l'adam dat, you grant to man, graciously grant man wisdom and teach him understanding. Chaneinu. Endow us, grant to us this wisdom, understanding, insight. Blessed are you, God, Chonein Hadaat, who is the giver of wisdom. Number two, Hashivena, repentance, bring us back, bring us near to you. Blessed are you, Hashem, who desires repentance. Forgiveness, forgive us, our Father, we have erred, pardon us, our King. Blessed are you who, who, who pardons abundantly. Redemption, behold our affliction, take up our grievance and redeem us speedily. For your name's sake, blessed you, Hashem, Redeemer of Israel. Page 105, Rafa'enu, health and healing, heal us, Hashem. We will be healed, save us, we will be saved. For you are our praise, bring complete recovery for all our ailments. Blessed are you, Hashem, who heals the sick of his people, Israel. Year of prosperity, bless on our behalf, Hashem, and God, this year and all its kinds of crops for the best. And give, we started to add this parentheses now. Give, attain talim talim racha. Give us the dew and rain. We only say that in the winter season. Right? Bless you, Hashem, who blesses the years. Page 107, sound the great shofar in gathering of exiles. Raise the banner. These are all our requests. Next one, restoration of justice. Restore our judges in earliest times. Well, the Malashinim was added on at a later time. And for slanderers, let there be no hope. May all wickedness perish in an instant. May the enemies be cut down, uproot, smash, cast down, and humble. That's the ideal. The humble, that they should be humbled and join forces with us instead of fighting against us. The bottom there, the righteous, right, on the righteous, right, may compassion be aroused and give goodly reward to those who believe in your name. Bless you, Hashem, assures of the righteous. Note 109, rebuilding Jerusalem. May you return in compassion to Jerusalem. May you rest within it. Bless you, Hashem, the builder of Jerusalem. Davidic reign, the offspring of your servant David, may you speedily cause to flourish. That's the Mashiach, the Messiah. Right? Bless you, Hashem, who causes the pride of salvation or the power of salvation to flourish. And lastly, sort of like the catch all, Shema Koleinu, acceptance of prayer. Hear our voice, Hashem, our God, pity and be compassionate to us and accept with compassion and favor our prayer. You, God, hear prayer supplications. Uh, right, and from himself, turn us away not empty handed. For you hear the prayer of your people, 111, with compassion, bless you, Hashem, who hears prayer. Those are the Bakashot requests. So the Bakashot requests are really, uh, the Bakashot, the blessings of requests are really very formalized. They're part of our Amidah, right? We're not going to have a book written about that, okay? The fourth category. <laughs> what this book is written about is Birkot Hanehen. The blessings when you make, when you're about to get pleasure, benefit from something then before you partake of that, 
you make a blessing. That is what we have the book about. Which food, which blessing? Now we have the app for that. But let's say you walk away in the middle. Let's say you walk outside. Does that require a different blessing? If I have a whole bunch, I'm, e- I'm eating a cluster of grapes. Do I make a blessing on each grape? No, make a blessing before you start eating grapes. Okay, I decided not to eat any more grapes. Then I changed my mind, I'm gonna have some more grapes. Another blessing? <laughs> now I, I finished with grapes, but I wanna have an orange. It's the same blessing, they, both, they all grow on the tree. Another blessing, not another blessing. I'm having a fruit salad with all different types of fruits in there. What blessings do I make? What's the order? I'm eating chalent. Chalent has beans. That's one blessing. Has barley. Another blessing. Has meat. Another blessing. What do I do with that? Right? Cakes. But I'm eating a lot of the cakes. Pizza. Is that a hamotzi? Is that like a meal? Right? I, that gets very, very complicated very very complicated that's what the book is about because the other brachot the brachot of requests pretty straightforward the brachot of thanks also that's basically part of our davening or you use the bathroom it's we actually have, have, have a beautiful plaque of the blessing right outside the bathroom over here and many people have that in their house. Outside their bathroom, they'll have, they'll have the, the blessing over there. Right? But that's pretty straightforward. The blessings on mitzvot are pretty straightforward. Now, normally you make the blessing before you do the mitzvah. But there are three exceptions two of which you might be aware of. Shabbat candles. Shabbat candles. Oh, mikvah, good. (coughs) And there's a third also. But let's start with Shabbat candles. Right? When a man lights Shabbat candles, okay, Josh, if Jackie's away and you're lighting Shabbat candles, you do it in the usual fashion. You'll make the blessing You'll make the blessing that you light the Shabbos candles. That's not how you do it. What do you guys do? You light it first. Cover your eyes. Make the blessing. But um, what's that all about? Why are you not first making the blessing? And then doing the mitzvah. That's the general rule what we always do. You first make the blessing and then you do the mitzvah. The reason why Shabbat candles is an exception and then we work to mitigate, to minimize the exception. But the reason is that a woman, once she makes the blessing, she has accepted Shabbos. So it's a catch-22. You're making the blessing, then you can't light the candles so you can't make fire on Shabbos. So therefore you need to first light the candles and then you usher in the Shabbat and then you cover your eyes, make the blessing, and then what's that about? Why do we light Shabbat candles? What is the idea of the Shabbat candles? Spoke about this on Shabbos, I think, a few weeks ago. I'm sorry. Yes, but what is it? But 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 what is it giving us? Right? There's a halacha that if a person only had enough money for either Shabbat candles or Hanukkah candles, Shabbat candles takes precedence, because Shabbat candles is what brings beauty and peace and tranquility to the home. So part of the Shabbos candles mitzvah is enjoying the beautiful glow of those Shabbat candles. So what do you do? 
you like them, but you don't get yet, you don't yet get hana'a. You don't yet get benefit from it. Make your blessing. Ah. And now you're getting your benefit. So by doing that, to a certain degree, the blessing is before the mitzvah. The mitzvah is to is, is to is to have that beautiful glow of Shabbat candles and to enjoy the glow of the Shabbat candles. Well, I haven't yet enjoyed it. Ah, I made the blessing. shel Shabbos. So that way, it has to be done. It can't be done in the classic way: first blessing, then candles. Because again, with the blessing, what happens, ladies? You've accepted Shabbos, yes. and now you can't light the candles if it's already Shabbos. But we mitigate the fact that we've already done the mitzvah. Well, we haven't fully done the mitzvah. So that way the blessing will at least be before we have completed the mitzvah, which is seeing and enjoying those Shabbat candles. So you light the candles, <laughs> cover your eyes, make the blessing, and then see it. Mikvah, Gabriella mentioned, is another example. So you go into the mikvah to purify yourself. So you want to make a bracha when you are in a purified state. So therefore, the minag Ashkenaz, minag Sfard is different, but the minag of the Ashkenaz is a woman will immerse in the mikvah. Right? Immerse means completely immerse in the water. Come up, right? Make the blessing and then immerse again. Okay, now the third example of a blessing on a mitzvah that's not done prior to doing the mitzvah is. I don't know this one. <laughs> think meals, my friends. Al nitilat yadayim. Right. Right. What should the order be? We should make the blessing you commanded us on the washing of the hands and then wash our hands. So what do we do? We wash our hands and then make the bracha. Why? Well, once again, similar to the mikvah, we want to be in a purified state before making the bracha. So we first wash our hands. Then we make the blessing, but we want to minimize and not have it completely after. And therefore, a lot of people make a mistake with this. And therefore, we are supposed to wash our hands, not dry them, make the blessing, and then dry your hands. Why? Because the drying of the hands is also part of the bracha. So therefore, granted, we're not doing it completely before the start of the bracha, but we're doing it at least midstream. We're not doing it when the when the mitzvah is completely finished. We're doing it before we complete the mitzvah. That's how we line that up. Okay. So those are our basic categories of brachot. Again, the purpose of the brachot is, in two words, tell me. To, uh, oh, the purpose of the brachot is to... come to, closer. To come closer. Yes, come closer. Is to increase. Increase awareness. Increase awareness. I was going to say God awareness, but everyone will get full credit for their answers, okay? I will graciously give full credit to all of those answers, right? And don't lose track of that. Next week, we will start. We're not going to go through the entire book. Like I said, that will take us two years to do this section. And I don't think you guys are going to write two years for this section. And then Shabbos, another two years. Right? Within 10 years, I'll have you guys uh, all converted. Don't worry. I'll give you that, that guarantee. Right? But I will go, I will, we'll, we'll learn how to navigate this book and probably spend a few weeks on it. Okay? Very good. Can yes, Sinner, Leia. Yes. Sinner, I'm so sorry. Yes, no so problem. As long as not uh, Rabbi Sinner, okay. <laughs> so, uh, 
So I noticed among myself and some of my friends, like in Hebrew school, for whatever reason, they didn't teach us Hebrew. Um, but the rabbis would always say, pray in Hebrew. And then that's when I feel like the disconnect comes in because we don't understand what we're reading. So no. I want to want to ask you your tips on how to like besides the brachot on like food and whatever but like say it's Yom Kippur and you're reading all these verses and you don't understand what you're reading yeah. how can you connect how can how can you connect with that when you're trying to like does uh, Hashem understand excellent. your English like you know? excellent so there are certain well first of all the halacha is it's better to do a little bit with kavana, with understanding, than doing a lot without kavana. So certainly on a Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, it would be a good idea to say less and say it slowly. And there are um, sidurim that are linear with the translation. There are some that are interlinear, meaning under each word, It'll have what it means, right? There are parts that can be said in English. Ideally, we're saying it in Hebrew, but a person can also say certain parts in English. I'll tell you this morning, right? Today was a fast day. So this morning we had the certain added tefillot called slichot, which is, I, I say it once a year, right? Because each fast day has its own tefillot. And the Hebrew is often not so simple. So when it's things that are being said responsively, I was the chazan, I was leading the services. So when the, when the congregation was saying their two lines, I was reading ahead in English. And that way when I said my next two lines, I already knew what it meant. So when I knew what it was saying, it was easier for me to understand it as I was saying it, okay? But I would say to you, Leah, say a lot less and do it slowly and carefully and get yourself one of these interlinear sidurim. And then the more you do that, the more you'll understand what you're saying. And then your challenge will be like my challenge, that even though you might understand the words, but not letting your mind wander. But... um. But when you have to fight for it, that's a good thing because that forces you to stay, to stay connect, to stay focused. Okay, but say less, get an interlinear sidur, right? And especially we'll, when we get to the Amidah, realize that the main thing is your own thoughts, right? The tefillah is meant to give you a structure, but then you put in your own requests. You're meant to personalize it. It's meant to be a an encounter between you and Hashem, a meaningful encounter between you and Hashem. All right? Okay. Good. Great. Class dismissed. <laughs> Thank you, Rabbi. Uh, Thank you, Rabbi. Good. Good. Thank Good seeing you. everybody. Simone, you feeling all right? Good. Josiah, you're good? I'm good. Yep, my car is just getting work done right now. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I have these extra cards for everyone else. Whenever you guys come around, happy to share them with you. Okay. Good night, everybody. Sure.